So I live my life with too many irons in the fire, but I've been putting off a really big job for too long, and it's this. This old house has a septic tank. This old house has a big willow tree about 40 feet from that septic tank, which means that that septic tank is probably full of willow roots and the drain field too. What that means is probably Christmas Eve, my septic system's gonna fail, and I don't want that to happen. So since I've got to pull out the septic system and hook up to city sewer, should have done it years ago, I'm gonna take the opportunity to do three other things. I'm running new water line to the house, water line to the shop, and natural gas to the shop. It's a big job. I'm not excited. It's going to tear up my beautiful backyard and then winter's gonna get here. But if I don't do it now, when am I gonna do it? So it's showtime, folks. One more iron goes into the fire. So here's the root of the problem. My folks planted this in about 1984. What is that, 39 years ago? Look at the size of this thing. I mean, it is, it's five feet through if, it, if it's an inch. And if there's one thing that's known about weeping willow trees, it is that they are voracious for water. And the only way this thing got this big in 40 years is by sipping consistently out of the septic tank, which is 30 feet behind me. Not only that, but I just know that it has invaded the drain field. And so this old septic system is done. And I wanna head that off at least a little bit. My hope is, that this beautiful part of my backyard doesn't just wither up and die when the gravy train is cut off. So in case you missed it, I'm also in the process of putting a new gate and entry system and fence out here. And so part of this digging is going to be bringing data and power out to this gate for security cameras and openers and lights and all of that. So I'll have a, a small and not too deep trench shooting back towards the house alongside the driveway while I'm doing it. So you can probably see why I've been putting this off so long. I've got to cut this fence. I've got to get out there and dig down to the tap that was put in place 25 years ago when they ran a new sewer line out from town right by the front of my dad's place and installed and made a record of the place that I need to dig in order to get to the line. I will show you when I pull this mess back that they put a pressure treated two by four into the ground, which I hope terminates right at the pipe that I have to find. All right, so let's walk down the route that I've got to dig for sewer, water, power, data, and maybe natural gas. This will be the first spot that sewer dives back to a clean out at the house to pick up the kitchen sink. The water will continue jump over to the water tap into the house. The sewer will continue to a clean out and then work its way back around the backyard to match the grade of the entrance into the septic tank over there. The secondary part of this project is going to bring water to a hydrant right here, the one that was there died about a year ago, bring water and gas turn the corner and on into the shop. So eight years ago when I put that addition on for my mom and dad I had this septic tank uncovered, um, tied in the new uh, waste line from the addition with the old waste line from the house, had to repair the septic tank, found out it was already just really had a lot of the willow tree roots in there and they were started into the drain field and now as I have mentioned to you I'm confident that they are fully invaded, right? I mean this poor little old septic tank which is I don't know at least at least 70 years old is done, all done. But the trick is I have to find the septic tank and then carefully uncover the juncture between the house, the line from the house, the line from the apartment, and uh, uncover it, keep it functional, and then starting with that grade and ending with the grade out at the street, start digging a ditch. I'm gonna repair some landscaping while I'm here because by the time I'm done with the pipe, there's gonna be a lot of repair to do. And the first thing I need to do is locate the tank. Now it doesn't always work, but you can make a probe. This is 3 8 round stock, 
sharpened on the end. I put a big bulky pipe handle on there and I can push it down into the ground, sort of. Oh, there's something, sounds like a rock. At a predictable 12 inch depth, it stops. I think that's the tank. existing septic tank and two incoming sewer lines uncovered, slopes understood, um, the fittings to join them understood, quarter inch per foot of fall coming this way. We've dug a lateral in for a future like two years from now. Um, remodel inside there, my wife's kitchen and a bathroom and all of that. So we'll stub that out, clean out, clean out. You've got to have a clean out like every 90 feet, 100 feet. We're gonna tighten that up, it'll be closer than that. I think it's or every 135 degrees of bend from straight, you know, adding up all the fittings. So anyhow, we've got the laser running. We're running out of daylight today, but I'm gonna lose a little bit of grade right here because I'd rather come back with some gravel to get grade than have to pick it down, you know, after the machine's working on the other end of the project. But we're closing in. Now right here, We have accidentally uncovered a PVC line that I hope is not an earlier water line that my dad might have run in here. But he can't remember that sort of thing anymore. And uh, so we're just gonna have to take our chances, intercept the water line where we know plus or minus three feet it's supposed to be, probably dry the house up for half an hour while we fix something. But in the meantime, we're making pretty good headway and we better because 10 days from now, there's rain in the forecast. On the west coast of the United States, and as far as I know, all the way across the country, it's mandatory that you call 811 for a locating service to come out and mark the public utilities that might be under the ground around your house before you dig. And I almost always do that. But as you'll see later, even though they're all marked, I still managed to hit a line. And so what I've got is nearly completing the devastation in the yard. Got grade pretty well figured out, or I will have by the time I put gravel in the bottom of the trench. And then we will go ahead and start right down the driveway. Cutting this fence and pulling out all this brush was the first step in one of the most tedious and longest dreaded aspects of this whole job, uncovering the tap into the main sewer line. So let me show you up close what I've been scraping away at, and it's been causing me heartburn now for months as I've been thinking about this. They put this in, they put the sewer line in, I don't know, maybe in 96, 95, 96, right in there, 18 inch sewer ran out by my dad's place and so to mark that they buried a 
pressure treated 2x4. An 8 footer, which I think was oriented about like that before I started digging, <coughs> which means that we are just, I'm standing at about the elevation of the bottom of that 2x4, which is, they uh, tell me, right up against the end of the tap into the city sewer. They came out with a four inch line, dropped the end of that board against it, backfilled it. So I'm hoping against hope that I haven't heard anything, that I'm deep enough and that I can uncover this tapering slab of really hard stuff and that that thing is intact enough down there to be protecting the end of the pipe. So the rut all happened right here at the top where there was some oxygen. Down here we're pretty good. And I think we're about, about maybe 16 inches below that right there and behind that to the end of that four inch pipe. So I'm gonna snuggle that Kubota up here a little closer gingerly with the 12 inch bucket try to work some of that back out and then come back in let the form setter have its way well we have uh victory or at least nearly a victory here's the tone wire which means that the end of that thing's got to be right here it's hard to get to but I think tomorrow morning we'll be back at it with a little more alacrity I hope because I can tell you this I'm beat as I watch this footage editing this video I remember that at this point I was thinking, well, I'm committed now, but I think I'm just barely good enough on my excavator to make this happen, and the weather is perfect, and I know I've got Brian Reynolds and Phil Rokas for expert advice and backup, so what could possibly go wrong? Well, let me tell you what, as it turned out, there were several things that could go wrong. Thanks for watching, Essential Craftsman. Keep up the good work.